everyone, my name's Amy. I'm the co-founder of Louder Than The Storm. We're an environmental movement dedicated to finding positivity, hope and inspiration in the face of adversity. One of the things that's central to our movement is climate intersectionality. So what on earth is intersectionality? Intersectionality is the understanding that different dynamics of oppression, power and privilege overlap and affect each other. The term was first coined by Kimberly Williams Crenshaw in the 1980s, but the concept of course has been around for much, much longer. It's basically the understanding that there are multiple aspects to humanity, including race, gender, class, sexual orientation, age, body type, and many, many more, and that these aspects don't exist separately from one another. For many, this means that different types of discrimination overlap and happen in parallel. So in order to effect true change, we must address and acknowledge all of these intersections. So what on earth is climate intersectionality? It is the understanding that discussions of climate are inextricably linked to dynamics of power, privilege and oppression. Examples of such intersections include race, human rights, gender and refugees. So when we talk about combating the climate crisis, we must also confront institutional oppression and the systems which perpetuate these inequalities. So what is climate justice? Climate justice relates to the inherent inequalities of the climate crisis. Whilst the main polluters of the world generally reside, live and consume in the Western world or the global north and are majority white, the communities who are feeling the impact of the climate crisis already live in the global south and they are majority people of colour and indigenous communities. Further, those at the forefront of the climate crisis live in communities which are not equipped to deal with the impacts of global heating. Climate justice also relates to the notion of sharing the benefits and the burdens equally, whilst also acknowledging and endeavouring to even the inherent imbalances of the climate crisis. We must also remember that there is no global we when it comes to solving the climate crisis. There is no single representative party who can speak on behalf of all communities of the global society. We must platform, therefore, listen to and engage with people from all cultures and communities, both global north and global south, to reach a global solution which is sustainable for all of our collective future. It is also important to remember that those people who need global, systemic, political change are also those people who do not have a seat at the table. This is not just a binary which exists between global north and global south. People of colour are disproportionately affected by the climate crisis in the Western world too. In the US, for example, people of colour, especially black people, are more likely to live near factories which emit toxic pollutants. So they are three times more likely to die from the effects of air pollution. Racism also impacts the ability of black, indigenous and people of colour to participate in climate protests because the socio-economic impact or risk for them is just that much higher than a white person. Let's talk about how the climate crisis intersects with human rights and refugees. The climate crisis is a refugee crisis of an unprecedented scale. By the end of 2016, 5.2 million refugees and migrants reached Europe. This was deemed the biggest refugee crisis we had seen in a long while, but the UN predicts that there will be up to 1 billion climate refugees by 2050. Extreme weather events such as floods, droughts and desertification will cause millions to flee their homes in search of a stable and safe place to live. This links directly to the issue of human rights. All of us have the right to life, freedom, security, health, water and sanitation, all of which the climate crisis threatens. Let's talk about gender and the climate crisis. Women make up the majority of the world's poor and are most often responsible for agricultural work, all of which will be threatened by the climate crisis. So what have we learned? We've learned that it's important to acknowledge, understand and confront all of these intersections when thinking about the climate crisis. The climate crisis is often reduced to being a scientific problem, but it's not, it's a human one. It's human freedoms, human lifestyles and even human lives and most importantly, some people's lives more than others that are being put at risk. So what can we do about it? Louder Than The Storm is founded on the belief that our voice is powerful and change is possible. So if we continue to engage with, talk about and understand the climate crisis and all of the societal issues that it intersects with, together we can start to create meaningful change. So here are some starting points. You can read more about climate intersectionality on our website or on our Instagram. 
you can start to think about how you can use your power as an economic consumer to make impactful choices of where you put your money, what kinds of organisations and companies you choose to support. And you can use your political voice to affect change in your communities and our governments, to put pressure on our leaders to make real long-term policy decisions. At the end of the day, we're a movement which grows through people. So if you're someone who believes what we believe, or you've learned something new about the climate crisis today, the best thing you can do is engage the people around you. Start a conversation, share your resources, talk about what you've learned. And remember, our voice is powerful, change is possible.